Hey, what's going on guys? So uh, in this uh, Let's Learn series, we're going to be discussing all about Webpack 2. Um, it's kind of like a very popular tool these days. A lot of web developers are using it. And I'm assuming because you're watching this video, you want to learn more about it too. Um, it's made a lot of changes since version 1. Um, it's much easier to understand, um, at least in my opinion, that they've done a uh, phenomenal job with uh, updating the docs. and. Um, so in this series, I'm kind of be, going to be doing things a little bit differently than um, the way I see other people teaching stuff. Um, I think it's really important as a web developer that you, um, an important skill is to know how to read and understand documentation. So it's one thing just to watch a video and to just follow along and copy and paste code that you see someone else putting up on the screen. You don't actually really absorb a whole lot, although it might be a little bit helpful. You don't actually retain, at least in my opinion, a whole lot of that information going forward. So my plan through this series is I'm literally just going to walk you through step by step the documentation in Webpack and I'm going to be showing you examples along the way because that way I can't possibly show you every single detail about Webpack but my goal is to give you a really solid foundation so that way after this series you can come back to the documentation if you want to use handlebars or you want to integrate stylists or you want to integrate some other package or plugin you'll have no problem being able to do that because you're already very familiar with how Webpack works under the hood and you already know how the whole website's laid out, how all the tools work, how the plugins work, how the loaders work, and most importantly, you'll understand how to navigate the documentation. So um, without that, let's um, kind of talk briefly kind of what um, Webpack is. And essentially what Webpack is, it's a module bundler. Um, for JavaScript applications, like it says right here. Now, what exactly does that mean? Well, if we go back to here, this diagram actually gives a really good description of what Webpack does. Essentially, what Webpack does is it's going to take all your files, all your assets, whether that's SAS files, SCSS, handlebars, JavaScript files, JPEGs, photos, fonts, whatever, all your different assets that you need for your project. It's going to take all of these things, and it, what it really does is it manages dependencies, like it says down here, modules with dependencies. So it keeps track of all these different files who rely on all these different files and all these different assets. It then it goes through Webpack, and then at the other end, Webpacks can output a single JavaScript file or multiple single S CSS file, all your other static assets and things like that. So you might be wondering, oh, it sounds kind of a lot like Grulp, uh, Grunt or Gulp, and not really. Webpack does a lot more complicated things underneath the hood and it's kind of made to do things different than Grunt or Gulp which are basically just task runners. You tell them what to do and they do it. Webpack is kind of more about managing all these different dependencies because web applications these days are getting increasingly more and more and more complex and having a way to manage all these different assets and things that are ha hanging out all on the periphery and making sense of everything is super important and Webpack is probably the best tool there is out there right now that does it. So now that we kind of understand a little bit more about Webpack and I know that might be like a little bit abstract but things will start to make more sense as we go through the rest of the videos. Um, but first in order for us to get started you're gonna need a few things. Um, so first I'm on a Mac so everything that I'm going to be showing is going to be on a Mac. You don't have to be on a Mac. You can be on a Windows, but just know up front that everything I'm teaching you is going to be on a Mac because that's what I have. Um, the first thing you're going to need is Node. Um, I'm assuming most of you probably already have this, um, but just in case you don't, just go to nodejs.org, download whichever um, version you need for your operating system. I personally just use the LTS, which means long-term support. Um, it's super easy for Mac, for Windows, whatever operating system you're on, you just, just click it, click OK a couple times and just go through the install screens. Um, I'm also am going to be using Yarn. Uh, you can see it at yarnpkg.com. Yarn is kind of like a different package manager for NPM. Um, it's just a heck of a lot faster. I prefer it over using NPM because NPM just takes forever. Um, you still can use NPM. There's really no difference as far as what packages you have available on Yarn or NPM. They're both using the NPM uh, repos. So if you want to use NPM, go for it. I'm going to be using Yarn. And then if you, in order to install Yarn, if you don't have it, the, probably the best way to do it if you're on a Mac is to use Homebrew. Um, if you don't have Homebrew, you can just click on Homebrew Package Manager. That brings you here. 
Homebrew is essentially a package manager for the Mac. So if you're familiar with Linux and you've ever used like Ubuntu, you do apt-get package name. It's the same thing with Macs. So you can install programs and libraries and files that you need um, through the command line. So those are the tools you're going to need. And then finally, what I've done is before I started recording this series, I've created a Git repository of all of the files that you're going to need throughout this, uh, this series. Um, so here's the link up here. I'll put it down in the description below. But basically what I've done is I've laid out um, all the links I'm going to be using and referring to in each of these videos right here. And then also what I've done is after I created each section in the code, um, I created a release. So if you click on releases up here at the top, each single one of these releases lines up to a one of the videos. So basically after I've finished creating the content, I've made a release. So basically you're going to come here to the start here and that's where we'll begin in this video. And then um, once we get through, and then we're going to progress and when, uh, during this video I'm going to be writing the code that's going to get you the, to this step. So each video I've created a new release so that way if you're following along and you see an error or your code's not lining up with my code or you just want to reference go back and forth, there's a, a like a snapshot of each code that I've created throughout the course of this uh, creating this course. So without that guys, let's uh, jump right, in, right into it. <clears throat> so what you're gonna do is, actually let me show you, that starter kit, start here, okay you're just gonna click on source code zip and that's just gonna download a zip file and you can see I've already downloaded a few of them but it's gonna be let's learn webpack2-1 okay so actually let me just show you that exactly so here's a zip file unzip it and here's the project there's nothing in it there's a little here license file and a readme so if we open it here's what we get absolutely nothing so we're going to start everything from bare bones scratch so we're going to open up our terminal and let's navigate to this project So a little shortcut if you're on your Mac, if you just put CD and then you drag the folder over, it'll automatically autofill the location. So now that we're in this project, the first thing we're going to need to do is we need to create a package.json file. Um, the reason why is we're going to be installing a bunch of packages from npm, and this is going to allow us to do that. So in order to create one from scratch, we can just do npm init. Now you can just hit enter here and then you'll go through a whole bunch of different prompts but if you want to shortcut it you can just put dash y and then it'll just create everything and fill it in for you. So let's just check that out real quick. Um, you could put your name in here if you want, it doesn't really matter. License, just put MIT. Again, none of this really matters, it's just you need this in order to start installing stuff from NPM. So let's do our first package. And since we're learning about Webpack, probably the first thing we should install is Webpack. So I'm going to yarn add dash d Webpack. Now, yarn add is the same thing as doing like npm install, but the dash d is going to save it to my dependencies. So normally, if you do an npm, you could do npm install dash dash save dash dev. The dash capital D is essentially the same thing, it's just a shortcut. So now if I look at my package JSON dev dependencies, I've got a webpack 3.5.5. So <clears throat> the first thing we're going to need to do is let's create a folder in here. Let's create a folder called source. And then let's create another folder called dist. So the source file is where we're going to create our source code. The dist file is where it's going to end up once we're done. So source file, let's put in index.js, blank file. Dist file, let's create an index.html. Okay, so we've got our source file folder, an index.js. We've got a dist folder with an index.html. There's nothing inside either one of them, okay? So first for uh, index.html, let's just create a simple HTML layout. So web. Okay, if you're wondering how I did that, I'm using a plugin called Emmet, and it'll just kind of autofill some things. It gives you some shortcuts, like if you wanted to create a div, like with a container class, it'll just kind of automatically do stuff. So super handy, definitely worth checking out. 
Um, okay, so let's see. So basically what we want to do is we want to create a bundle of our index.js and we want to use Webpack to do that. So inside our um, index.js, sorry, um, I'm just going to put a simple console log i from Webpack. Okay, now this could be anything you want. I'm just using this for demonstration purposes. So in order to start utilizing Webpack, we're going to need a Webpack config. Now this is where people get tripped up. These things look crazy confusing at first, but well, I'm going to walk you through step by step and it's actually not that bad. It can seem a little overwhelming at first, but I'm going to walk you through line by line and things are going to really start to make sense. So let's create a new file in the root of our project and we're going to call it webpack.config.js. So what this does, this is a configuration file that Webpack is going to, going to read in order to use all the things that we need for our project. So the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to create, we're going to use this path variable. This comes from Node. This is not from uh, Webpack. This is just going to help uh, Webpack to know where our lo uh, files are located. So the first thing is we're going to do module.exports. Okay, we're going to export an object. First thing is an entry, and the entry is source index.js. Now this is the entry point for Webpack. What this means is this is the this is the main file that Webpack is going to look for. So all of our application and everything is going to come through this entry point, this index.js, which is just this simple console.log statement. Okay, so that's our entry point, and then it would make sense we need an output point. Output is basically once, so our source code is going to be in this entry point. Webpack's going to pull this in, then Webpack's going to do its magic, not really, we're going to tell Webpack what to do, and then we need to tell Webpack, once Webpack, you're done processing this file, put it over here. Here's the output. So first we need a file name, so this is going to be the name of the file once we're done. We're going to call it bundle.js. You can call it anything you want, but that's kind of like the standard. So path is the location to where you want this to come. So now we're going to use path, which is our variable. We just declare it up here. This is part of node again. This is not webpack. We're going to do resolve dir name dist. So basically what this is saying, here's my entry point. Here's the main file. Webpack, when you're done, you're going to rename the file to bundle.js. And here's where you're going to output it into the dist folder here. So it's going to be, it's going to show up next to our uh, index.html. Now, Within our index.html, we need to reference this file, so we can just do script uh, source bundle.js. Okay, so now once we run Webpack, Webpack's going to bundle it together. It's going to stick it inside this dist folder, and now this index.js file is going to have access to it. So let's check it out and see if that what we get. So let's just do, oh, I forgot one thing. We're going to use a quick... Um, script in order to run webpack. So in your package.json you can create scripts. So we're going to call this one um, build and then we're just going to put in webpack. So now when we can um, within our terminal we can do yarn run build and that's going to run webpack for us. So if it works you just see an output similar to like this and then if we look in here, we've got our dist folder, we've got the bundle.js, which is what we told it. Take this file, index.js, rename it to bundle.js, and put it in the dist folder, which is did right here. So now if we open this up in our browser, it says, hi from Webpack. So, that's simple, we just created our first Webpack bundle. I know that's not super exciting, but that's basically the bare minimum of what you need to know in order to get started with Webpack. Now, that might still seem a little bit abstract, you're not even really sure what's going on, especially if you look at what's inside this bundle.js. There's a whole bunch of code in here that we did not add, and this is the only code that we actually wrote. There's a whole bunch of other stuff going on in here. So as we go through the series, things are going to start to make more sense, and we'll start adding in loaders, how to deal with uh, SAS, how to post CSS, and all kinds of different kinds of stuff. So um, see you in the next one, guys.